Hey everyone, this is Chris, and thanks to some wonderful technical difficulties, this is take two, 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 however you make two on camera without it looking awkward or insulting, uh, at recording this video. I uh, sleeved up Mount Gundabad uh, over the last couple of days and have been having some fun looking at the cards, thinking about what sort of deck they make the most sense in. Uh, and since I've been a little bit on a secrecy kick lately, uh, what I decided to do is throw together a quick free hero Hobbit secrecy deck to sort of see how that plays out. Uh, so I have three copies of the Shire Folk, a couple copies of the new event whose name I've already forgotten that allows you to basically mulligan your hand if you have a Hobbit hero. Uh, which I'm, I'm not actually convinced is going to be that great for this particular deck, just because ideally I'm going to dump out all my cards in one go early on. Uh, but we will find out. Uh, and we are going up against Attack on Dol Guldur today, uh, which was definitely an interesting quest uh, a couple of years ago at Gen Con when... Everyone got destroyed in epic multiplayer mode, uh, but I think it should be a little more friendly in solo. I almost earned the Host of Lorien in my first attempt, uh, were it not for some pesky enemy effects that I forgot to account for. So we'll see if we can do better this time. Also, I have a really nice opening hand because I have the Shire Folk, I have secrecy allies for willpower, uh, I have a Glorfindel that I can sort of hope to ramp into. Uh, so let's just kick it off and see how this goes. Well, deep knowledge is good, uh, but maybe not so useful right away. Well, I mean, I am... Yeah, all right. So I will play deep knowledge to doomed two and draw two cards. That's good. Uh, and then immediately follow it up with the Shire Folk to drop my threat by four. So effectively, we are down to 17. And I'm still in secrecy mode, so I will spend one for a Kelduin Traveler. Looking at... Oof. All right, well, this is a gross enemy. Uh, but ideally, I will never have to deal with it, and it will just do a static one threat from the encounter deck every round, which is okay, actually. Let me take this one off of Falco Boffin to put a resourceful, resourceful on. Uh, I have Glorfindel and another, bleh, throwing cards around, and another Kelduin Traveler in my hand. Uh, so that should set me up well for the future. Also have Rosie. But I can't play her yet, so we're going to follow this up with Bill the Pony. Which I think is probably about as uh, effective of an opening turn as I could have. If I had timely aid to draw something else off the top, that would be even better. But we're going to make do with what we've got. So let's commit to the quest. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in round one up against two... I know what this is. Three is going to be seven progress. Host of Dogodur is one threat. Uh, so let's see. Yes, travel can't travel. Encounter. I don't want to deal with either of these enemies, so I will not. Uh, it means host of Dogodur eats one progress. Uh, as well as puts out one point of archery damage. I had the specific archery tokens a second ago. There we go. One point of archery. I think that's okay. A refresh we took up to 18. Uh, so we're going to get one more round in secrecy, just thanks to the way this quest works. Uh, end of the round, I move these progress to Power of Lorien. Add one tracker token here. Draw one card. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, and add one resource to a hero, which I will put on Sam this time around. I just drew Timely Aid. 
think that's the range. All right, and then I will draw my card for the following round. Seeing the Shire Folk here is brilliant. All right, so lots of things to play this time. Started off with Timely Aid, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I don't, uh, so I have Gaffer Gamgee as an option, another new card that helps me cancel attacks, uh, which is especially good if I get resourceful on Falco Boffin, because you can just keep doing it round after round, assuming your threat is low enough. Uh, but I'm gonna take Ithilien Lookout instead because that's going to allow me to look at the top card of the encounter deck one more time uh, and have a sense of how much threat we're going to be up against. Uh, certainly not going to fight the host of Dogwolder probably ever, because honestly that 8 attack and 16 effective hit points is uh, unreasonable for solo deck to deal with, even though I could basically tank it with the threat from Frodo. All right, so that was Timely Aid, which is pretty good. And I look at this, and it is an Emon Lonk Archer, which I do not want to deal with uh, because that archery damage is going to bury me if I'm not careful. We'll play the Shire Folk again to drop my threat by four, giving me a little more time in secrecy. Uh, I don't have any card draw to get do things that I would like to play instead, but that's all right. Uh, I will put out a second Kelduin Traveler. It allows me to look one more time at the top card. Uh, that is absolutely fine. Uh, it's a treachery, fear, and despair, uh, so it's not even going to block me from making progress. It will probably exhaust Frodo, but I'm okay with that. Spent two off of Sam for Rosie Cotton. And one off of Falco Boffin for a fast hitch on Frodo. Last card left in my hand is the Glorfindel I mentioned, which we will be playing soon enough, I hope. Uh, so let's see. At this point, you know, I'm going to Doomed One. I know one of my characters is going to be exhausted, but there is only going to be three threat in the staging area. So if I can make... Oh, there's, there's basically no way I'm going to be able to defend the Marauders and uh, do enough progress to gain the Host of Lorien. So instead, I'm just going to quest all out and we're going to deal. So, uh, two, four, six, seven, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15? That's actually kind of ridiculous. That's gonna be 12 extra progress. Maybe I'll get enough to get Power of Lorien if I do this well. But okay, uh, so 15 up against three in the staging area. We reveal Fear and Despair. Doomed one ticks me up to 15 threat, uh, and I have to exhaust a character, and I can't ready them by player card effects until the end of the round. I can't ready any characters by player card effects until the end of the round, so no Sam shenanigans. And like I just calculated, 15 up against 3 is 12 points of progress. It is 5, 10, 11, 12. Uh, we are going to lose one from the host of Dolgol Dur. And I do have to put out one more archery damage, so let's take that on. Luin Traveler? I mean, I could just take it on Frodo and raise my threat by one. Or on Frodo and not raise my threat by one. Um. I know there's a treachery in here that does one damage to exhausted characters. Uh, I'm loading up my willpower with so much archery is potentially a problem. Uh, so I will put it on Frodo, and I will not choose to take the threat instead. So 
long and complicated <laughs> archery resolution aside, we move now to refresh. Uh, Frodo does still get to ready because that treachery was specifically player card effects. Moving to the end of the round, I take all this progress, which is currently, uh, what is that, 17 out of the 30 that I would need to get Host of Lorien and Power of Lorien. I add another boat token over here, uh, draw a card and generate a resource. Put that resource on Sam? I just got Darren's runes. I know that one resource doesn't make a difference for Glorfindel. Uh, yeah, so that's a tough one. But we'll move on to round number three, drawing, ooh. Well, now I kind of wish I had put that resource on Frodo uh, because Jubair is great, genuinely great. Uh, I think my threat should be one higher as well. If I'm wrong, at least I'm wrong in the right direction. Uh, so we will play Darren's Runes. I will draw two cards. I will discard this Glorfindel because I can play him from the discard pile. Although, honestly, at this point, I might prefer to have Jubair. Uh, I'll spend one off of Falco Buffin to put Fast Hitch on Sam. And I'm gonna cash in these three for a Free resource token just to make my life a little easier. And this Woodman's Clearing does me no good until stage three, but uh, we are almost there. Yeah. And I have no idea what's coming this round, so we're going to find out. Uh, I am going to send two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ooh, the quest. I'm, I'm definitely lower threat than all of the enemies. Um, I can use Rosie for a boost if I want it. But I feel like I counted wrong. 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, 13, and I can make it 15 with Rosie, uh, which is not going to be enough no matter what I do to earn the power of Lorien, so maybe I should hold, eh, defend with Frodo, I can attack with Rosie boosted Sam for four. I definitely will have progress to spare, so all right, send 13 to the quest. Uh, so that sucks, but yes. Uh, the Necromancer's Rage. Costs me one of these, as well as a whole bunch of damage elsewhere. Uh, and those characters contribute one less willpower. So does Frodo. So, new total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Up against three is still five progress. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, we're going to lose some of this, so I'm not using a fiver token. Uh, okay. But that was all well and good, and I only lost one character, so I'm pretty happy with that. I will choose to optionally engage the host or the Dogledur Marauder, uh, which means the host of Dogledur eats another token into combat. Uh, Frodo is going to defend this attack, and we're going to remove one more progress as I make a mess of things yet again. Uh, so three attack versus Frodo's two defense. Beast of Tarn of Wind is a really nice card to see as a shadow. Uh, means that either Frodo takes one damage or I raise my threat by one. I will choose to raise my threat by one. 18 is still plenty low. Uh, and I can do two or Boosting Sam with Rosie to kill the Dog Elder Marauder. Thankfully. Uh, and we're in pretty great shape right now. Much better than the first time, that is for sure. Uh, I think because I got a little more threat reduction early on so I could actually use my secrecy cards more regularly. 
But let us move on to refresh, tick up to 19. Ready all the characters that I have left. End of the round, we move this progress over here to Power of Lorien. And we are going to advance before I get to draw a card and gain a resource, which is very sad, but that's okay. Crossing the Anduin. So I can either remove 10 to get Host of Lorien, or 20, which is just what I have to get Power of Lorien. Uh, but Genuinely, I would much rather have the Host of Lorien. That ally is incredibly powerful. And the power of Lorien can go off to the side and not be picking it up. And crossing the Anduin, I have to grab a Dolgaldur location and add it to the staging area. Legitimately, there are so many of these that are just not hurtful to my deck. I might pull out a Gate of Dolgaldur and move to that stage just Just to sort of get that no threat production shenanigans out of the way. I think I will. All right, so we're going to take Gate of Dongle Dur, uh, which can't travel to unless you're at stage 3B. Uh, and it prevents you from reducing your threat by more than one each round, although we're pretty close to out of threat reduction effects, uh, and it only has that ability when it's in the staging area. Since we haven't gotten any locations yet, we should be able to travel there and hopefully clear it out, uh, as well as providing a, a place for me to attach the woodman's clearing that I have sitting in my hand. So I think that all is fine. And the when revealed, we now travel to stage three, one of four choices. I believe I will pick 3A, the Siege of Dongle Dur, which brings me to the Bane of Amon Lonk, uh, who does not make an attack right now, thankfully. But he does get minus one engagement cost for each progress token that we have made. Uh, but we need to make five or more every round. We make 10, we get to reduce the city's strength by a significant amount. Uh, so that is a way that a, a sort of sneaky force could make it. But uh, let's just see how we do. So that was end of the round. <laughs> Uh, moving on to the beginning of the next one, draw one card. Friend of Friends is good, but I would much rather have a second one. Um, I don't have any healing. Honestly, I can just prevent a bunch of damage with Frodo if I want. Uh, so let's spend all five of these, dig out. The Morphin. Juber is nice, but I think right now I'd rather have the willpower uh, so I can clear out the gate of Dongle Dur and get my threat reduction. I think that's what I want. All right, uh, and that's really all I can play. Friend of Friends, I'm just going to hold on to as a possible discard right now. I might end up dropping Falco Boffin for threat reduction at some point. Uh, so let's just quest, see how we do. I'd like to make 10 progress, or at least 5. Alright, so we're going to commit to the 
quest. Two, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and I can make it sixteen. Up against six. Basically have to send Gorfindel. Make it 17. Oh, sorry. Falco is exhausted. All right, 17 up against six. We reveal Dungeon Door, uh, which isn't going to do anything right now because I can't heal any characters. And once again, I sent 17. We are up against eight. So let's make it 19 for me. Uh, which is going to put 10, 11 points of progress on the Siege of Dol Guldur. I will travel to the Gate of Dol Guldur. Drop my Threat Tracker. I'm slightly out of the way. Put it over here. All right, so that was travel. Uh, encounter, the Bane of Amon Lonk currently has... Uh, a, an engagement threshold of 34, thanks to his some of this passive ability, uh, which I'm just not going to deal with at all. So, uh, host of Dalgwilder removes a progress in the engagement phase. I have to take one archery damage. I will take on Glorfindel. He has the most hit points to spare. Uh, and next round, I would like to be in secrecy just in case. I don't know what I would draw that would be great. Uh, maybe timely aid, although I could play that regardless. Uh, so we're just going to roll with it. So end of the, well, I guess I'll continue to be good about doing these effects in order. Uh, refresh takes me up to 20 threat. End of the round, I either remove five progress or raise the city's strength by three. So I'll remove five progress and I can optionally remove five progress to drop it back down to by three. So down to seven on the city strength. And I didn't kill any enemies or clear out any locations. So that's just all we've got. Draw for the round. Fast hitch is nice. One, two, three, and Sam should be at four resources. So I might as well play fast hitch. On. Honestly, I might as well play fast hitch on Rosie so that I can get that boost a little more often. I will play Woodman's Clearing on the Gate of Doggle Durr. So this round, I think we're going to be a little bit worse off as far as the progress goes. Uh, but let's commit to the quest. Two, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fourteen, seventeen. Commit Rosie and double her willpower. So let's do that. So 19 committed to the quest right now, up against six, one more time, up against nine. So I will exhaust Rosie, make it 21 up against nine is probably irrelevant, uh, but that is 12 points of progress. Actually, yeah, so I didn't need to do that, but I'm not gonna fight any enemies, so. All right, doesn't matter. Uh, we're gonna make 12 points of progress or on the gate of Dol Guldur, which drops my threat down 17. Uh, and eight on the main quest, which is more or less okay. Hmm, I can't travel to Dungeon Door. So I guess I have to travel to the Blackened Woods, which also doesn't have any siege progress, but maybe that's fine. Keeps me at a pretty stable six. Uh, I remove one progress. 
thanks to the host of Dog Alter, put out one single point of archery damage, uh, which I will take as threat this time. Yep, that is all of that. Uh, end of the round, I will remove five progress to prevent raising the city strength. Uh, but I did clear out a two siege location, so we are down to five, uh, which means we are almost ready to kill the Bane of Almanlonk. Almost. Take up to 19 in the refresh phase, which again, out of order, but I'm just gonna be disappointed in myself for that forever. Draw a card for the round. Ooh, deep knowledge is very tempting. One on Falco, one on Sam, and Frodo should be at four. So next round, we will be able to play Jubair. Uh, we're already above the threat threshold for the lowest enemy in the deck, so let's deep knowledge. Move up to 21. Just out of secrecy range, draw those two cards. Well, okay. All right, now I feel real good about this. Uh, we get a second friend of friends for Sam and Frodo. So now they are both better. I have, do I even need to play this resourceful? I don't think I do. I'm not going to do anything else with these resources, but that's okay. All right, so actually, do I want a friend of friends on Rosie instead? Mm, only hero, so it doesn't matter. All right, let's commit to the quest two, five, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Uh, and Rosie makes it 21. Uh, we should definitely not end up having to engage the troll if I don't want to. Uh, so 21 up against 6, 7, 8 is going to be 13 points of progress, three on Blackened Woods, and 10 on the main quest. Uh, Blackened Woods is going to discard an encounter card, raise my threat by two, which genuinely seems fine, all things considered. Uh, but I cannot travel to the dungeon door, uh, yep, so can't travel. Move to encounter. I will choose to engage the Dogledur Marauder. Host of Dogledur is going to eat one progress, like they always do. Do combat pretty quickly here. Uh, Frodo defends three defense versus three attacks, since I'm going to have them eat another progress. Shadow card is Beast of Tarnif Wind again, so I, I feel very lucky about these werewolves. Uh, so Frodo takes no damage, and I only need four to kill the Marauder, but I have access to three, six, seven, eight is more than enough. Kill the Dogalter Marauder, and that is that. Refresh, tick up to 24. I'm just gonna leave Fast Hitch exhausted for a little bit because my play area is turning into a mess. And I'm probably gonna do the same thing next round where I have Frodo and Sam commit to the quest, but stay ready. End of the round, I spend five progress to prevent raising the city strength, and I spend five more to reduce it by three. Knocks me down to two. Uh, and I killed one enemy with siege one. So we are down to one strength on Dol Goldur. Seems good. 
draw a card for the round. Well, there's the third friend of friends. So one, two, three, four resources. Uh, and we are going to spend five off of Frodo. Drop this Jubair into play. Uh, extra friend of friends will probably just be discarded to help me destroy uh, the Bane of Amon Lonk. Uh, let me actually check and make sure I fully understand how to do that. Yeah, okie dokie. So the troll is indestructible until the city is at strength zero. Now I have to remember precisely the rules for indestructible, which I, I think means that I can put damage on it. It just doesn't get killed until it loses indestructible, which the cards seem to back up. Uh, so I should be able to do that this round, hopefully, uh, with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, twelve from somewhere. Frodo, or Million Lookout, or Build a Pony. Uh, yeah, I feel pretty good about that. So, let's commit characters to the quest. I just, well, I want to make 10 progress in order to, in order to be able to actually get rid of that. So, two, five, nine, and 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, uh, 17, 18, 19. Discarding friend of friends. Uh, Rosie goes for 21. And I have a pretty decent set up here for uh, combat after this. So 21. 21, uh, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Plus nine, 21, yes. Up against six. Up against nine is 12 points of progress. Boom. Uh, which is pretty good. I will travel to Blackened Woods because I don't feel like I have much choice. Gonna move my threat tracker over there to make space for the troll. Will optionally engage the Bane of Amon Lonk, which triggers Sam's ability, boosting his stat. I am not going to engage the host of Doggle Durr, so that removes one progress token from the main quest. I have to do an archery damage at some point, so we'll just drop that on Jubair. Bane of Amon Lonk is swinging for five, so I'll have. Counting again, I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 points of damage. So yes, uh, Frodo will defend the troll, planning on taking this damage as threat. Oof. Well, that uh, stinks a little bit. Fastness of Mirkwood, attacking enemy gets plus two and plus two defense. So he's gonna hit for seven, which means my threat has to go up. Oh, I also have to discard a random card from my hand, which I uh, genuinely could have done sooner. So we're looking at an 11 strength attack, uh, means my threat has to go up to 32. And he's currently sitting at five defense. So I have three or five, uh, and I can do eight points of damage to the Bane of Amon. Uh, so here, we'll use one of these for five, six, seven, eight, running out of damage tokens. One shy. One shy. On the positive side, I Spend 10 of these tokens to get myself down to city strength of zero. So now we should be pretty good to go from here. I just need to deal with the troll. Uh, refresh takes me up to 33. 
Uh, and I think this round I need to find a way to discard or play the last card in my hand to avoid that massive attack power spike. It's Quick Beam. I will probably just play it. In fact, I will definitely just play it because there's no reason not to. One of those there, and we can turn these into three. Proto gets two, Sam gets one. All right, do swap these around for change. Then two, get a quick beam. Comes into play with a damage. No cards in hand. Six threat in the staging area. Need to make five progress, eight total. Uh, so I will send nine and 11. Um, yeah, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Save Rosie for a combat boost. Might draw an enemy I have to deal with. Uh, so 19 up against three. Oof. Uh, okay. Uh, first things first, we get this immediate attack, uh, which I think I will defend with Athelion Lookout. I don't need his two. Combat strength, uh, Shadow Road has no shadow effect. This is just destroyed. Myself slightly more space. Uh, and it surges, of course. Second dungeon door. So I sent, as I counted, 19 up against 5 is 14 progress, uh, which is 3 here. Oof, I'm going to have to engage the host of Dalgo Dur. 3 here and all of those. Uh, because I explored the Blackened Wood, I have to raise my threat by none. Okie dokie. Oh no, wait, it's just the Bane of Amalong that gets its engagement cost reduced. I don't have to deal with the host of Dog Wilder. It's just going to eat one progress, put a point of damage on Quick Beam. Why not? City Strength is at zero, so all I have to do is one point of damage to the troll. So. All right, Quick Beam, you were great, but I think you have to go. Uh, defending character cannot ready until the end of the round. That is fine, because Quick Beam is very dead. Wasn't going to ready anyways. Okay, and now I just need to do a little bit of damage to the Bane of Amon Lank, since it is no longer indestructible. So, uh, totaling up the combat strength that I have left, it is two, five, Six, seven, with Rosie boosting one of the hobbits. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thanks to friend of friends. <sighs> Which, if it weren't for that defense shadow last round, would be enough to deal with the troll outright. Instead, we're just going to put an extra nine damage on it. Add the Bane of Amonlanc to the victory display. And we have claimed the city of Dogaldur in this siege. In a slightly messy fashion, thanks to shadow effects. But yeah, it uh, turns out secrecy is good. Quests that are miserable in 12 players are not always that bad. Uh, at lower player counts, especially like this one, if they have a sort of outlet for questy decks to deal with. Uh, we did definitely get a little bit lucky not having to deal with the Beast of Tarn of Wynn. Uh, I didn't get to loop Gaffer Gamgee, which is disappointing because uh, I think that card is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, it's basically the old Hama lock, as long as you keep your threat low enough. I didn't get to play Drinking Song, um, but it wouldn't have mattered because my hand was so low for pretty much the entire game. 
I did finally get to use friend of friends. Uh, that's a thing that I haven't really been able to pull off in a very long time. And I think that's going to wrap it up for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone.